Hello garden friends and welcome to my channel DK's Garden Oasis. I am Debbie, Master Gardener and Butterfly Raising Hobbyist. On this channel I hope to inspire you to bloom, grow and conserve in your garden. Today I'm going to be talking about overwintering your black swallowtails and some questions that I've seen uh, under the details of my videos or emailed me. Make sure you stay till the end where I share a helpful garden tip about having long lasting blooms for your cut flowers. So I'm back from my master gardening conference and I hope to have a video about what I did at the conference. I got to visit a lot of cool places and some really informative seminars. So I've been raising black swallowtails for approximately seven years. I believe I started in 2017. At the beginning, I brought in every egg and raised them all indoors. And at one point, for those that don't know me, I also raise monarchs. I raised over 150 caterpillars of both monarchs and black swallowtails. And so you can imagine my life that summer was all about caterpillars and butterflies. So then I decided to pull back a little bit and Although the year before, when, when I had all those butterflies, I did have the veggie pod. I thought, well, why can't I just raise them in the veggie pod? Because the plants don't get extremely large like milkweed plants. And so that's what I did. So in mid-March, I start the seeds and I grew dill, fennel, parsley, uh, just to name a few, I've tried different combinations, but I've found that dill seems to be their favorite, at least where I am. So that's the majority of what I grow in the veggie pod and in my pots. You can grow just about anything in the veggie pod, you can, but this is what I use this for. And I'll show you a picture above what that looks like. And also the video where I did plant that veggie pod. So what I do is I, again, start planting in mid-March and of course it's indoors so I put it against this window that I have right here for a couple months until mid-May when I bring in my overwintering black swallowtails from the garage and then I put out my veggie pod and as uh, then I mist the black swallowtails lightly to wake them up and then once they emerge, I take the cover off of the veggie pod so that the females can start laying eggs, which they do pretty quickly. Usually they emerge within a week to 10 days. And I did, however, have one that did not emerge for 22 months. Uh, it went into its chrysalis in August of 2019, did not wake up at all 2020. And then in 2021, in May, it emerged a female. So it can stay in its chrysalis or diapause, which I'll explain in a little bit, uh, for close to two years. So don't be alarmed if after the first year they don't wake up. If you do want to raise them indoors, I have a couple of videos about that. So make sure you check out my channel and I will link those above and below in the details of this video if you want to check those out. So what you're going to need to raise them indoors is your enclosure, some floral tubes for the host plants, and lots of food. So one of the questions that I have seen the most is what can I grow for the black swallowtails? And they eat anything out of the carrot family. So that's carrot tops, parsley, dill, fennel, rue, and Queen Anne's lace. Again, mine seems to favor the dill, but I do grow rue and Queen Anne's lace in my garden for any black swallowtails that want to lay eggs in my garden. Some people prefer parsley as it's a little more sturdy than the dill, but I found that the uh, black swallowtail caterpillars eat them as fast as I can put them out. So I don't seem to have a problem with the dill because they don't last as far as them eating it more than one day. So if I could give you one piece of advice in raising black swallowtails is to have an abundance of food. Which leads me to another question that I've been asked is, can I buy the dill or parsley from the grocery store? And my recommendation is not to buy that from the grocery stores. Most of the time it's been treated with Bt. Even if it's organic, it is deadly to caterpillars. Bt is a derivative of lepidopterin, 
disease or Bacillus therogenesis or Bt for short. Bt is used to kill worms or caterpillars generally in or on food. Corn, green beans, sweet peppers, and other vegetables are treated with Bt. Since it's a soil-borne bacteria that occurs naturally and organic, it can be used in certified organic plants. Certified organic was created for safe use by mammal consumption, which to me is debatable, but, but it is not safe for insect consumption. Once the caterpillar eats the plant treated with Bt, certain proteins bind to the intestinal linings and rupture cells. Within a few hours, the caterpillars stop eating and within three days they will die. Also flea and tick preventions such as frontline and advantix are not safe for insects. So after you pet your dog or cat, make sure you wash your hands before you start handling food or the enclosures. You also wanna make sure you disinfect your enclosures after use. So back to overwintering your black swallowtails. And then I'll also show you how I prepare them. Once August comes, I start taking the caterpillars in, when they're in very large in their last instar and I bring them inside and I will show you a couple of videos of what that looks like. Generally what I do is I bring them in when they're large or they purge which is like a green liquid sometimes that you'll see. Generally for me I just bring them in at a certain size. They usually purge in the the rolls that I have and that's when I know they're gonna be going in their chrysalis. They spin a small pad on the bottom and then they make their sling and they hang like that for about 24 hours. Then the next day they go into their chrysalis. I usually leave them for about a day to harden and then the next day is when I make those flower pills. All right, I wanted to show you the color variations of these black swallowtails. They are mainly black stripes with a little bit of green whereas most of them have more of this green striping but they can be various shades and that's why i wanted to show you these two these two should be going and it's chrysalis pretty soon i think i'm going to put them in the toilet rolls pretty soon i have one that i'm waiting for it to go in its chrysalis this one is still and it's chrysalis, so I'm not sure if this is going to overwinter. Um, and then I have three more that are in chrysalises as well. So I will let you know if they emerge, but they could be the overwintering black swallowtails. Okay, this is my overwintering enclosure. I hang this in the garage. Where it stays cool all winter but um, it doesn't get the harshness of of the winter so um, you can see I have different variations of colors on these chrysalis so this one is a brownish when it's to its chrysalis on 87 this one's a little darker when it to its chrysalis 88 and this one just must have happened I just missed it today and it's green so various colors that you'll see. And I will show you as I get the last, I think I have four more right now that will be going in chrysalis. And I'll show you all of those when I pin them up to this enclosure. Okay, this is one that I wasn't sure if it was gonna overwinter. It's from eight, seven. It's chrysalis is right here. You can see it's opened up and it is a female. I'm not sure if she's ready to go yet though, so I will let her out in a couple of hours. All right, this black swallowtail is ready to go. Female, I'm going to release her. She is ready, so I'm trying to get her out. There she goes.
I have six that currently I'm assuming are going to overwinter. I did have four more that went into a chrysalis at the same time as the other six, but they did emerge late August. So you just never know when they will emerge. They are on their own timetable. But generally for me, after the mid-August, I start treating them as if they were are going to overwinter. And my first frost is October 15th. And so I keep them in an enclosure indoors or hang it outside to see if any more will emerge. And then by the beginning of October or first before the first frost is when I hang it in my garage. What do I do to prepare them for overwinter? I've seen a lot of people ask me, how do you know when a caterpillar will overwinter. And honestly, you just don't know. You could have, again, two like mine, you could have two go in a chrysalis at the same time and one will emerge and one will overwinter. They are triggered by shortening daylight and are in a state of diapause, which means suspended life development and all life processes are shut down. They are not sleeping like bears going in hibernation in winter they are actually suspended in their life cycle. No adult black swallowtails, at least in my zone 5B, will not live through the winter or migrate like the monarchs. Generally, adult black swallowtail butterflies live one month. I had one person comment, Renee Hernandez 2185, asking me what she should do after finding a black swallowtail chrysalis had fallen off the stalk of her dill. So again, unlike monarchs that have a cream master that sometimes you could take their silk and attach it and then pin it to the enclosure, the black swallowtails have a silk pad on the uh, bottom of their chrysalis and they attach it to a twig or whatever they see fit and then they, they spin a harness. I find the black swallowtails are much easier than the monarchs. The black swallowtail, you can leave them on the bottom of the enclosure and um, just kind of put them to the side of the enclosure and they will crawl up and dry their wings that way. Or you can do a couple of methods that I'll show you in a couple of minutes. If you want to do that, that's another option. But honestly, in the wild, they can be just about anywhere. In fact, I had found a emerged black swallowtail on the bottom of decking. We were replacing some decking and I lifted it up and there was a chrysalis that had eclosed already. So I think this was probably one of mine that escaped the veggie pod and just found its way under the deck and that's where it attached. It was safe from most predators and still was outside. So they can just be about anywhere. But sometimes I do like to move them like if they make their chrysalis in the veggie pod and they're going to overwinter, then uh, what I do is I gently remove them from the silk and then make what I call is their butterfly pillow. And I'll show you again how I make that. Then I either hang them outside and see if they're going to emerge or bring them indoors if the weather's not favorable for them. And then once October comes, I hang them in my garage. And again, that is mainly so that they are not eaten by rodents. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, first of all, this is the enclosure that I have for my overwintering black swallowtails. It's just a small mesh enclosure and I have five, I'm gonna show you example um, with this one. Um, so there's six of them sitting in here and it looks like the dates range from 8, 9 to 8, 20. So anywhere from mid-August to late August is when I found these and they will overwinter. So there's a couple of ways that I get them ready. So initially, and I have a couple of videos that I'll show you um, where, where I have uh, show you the process, but this is what I generally do. I bring them in again as 
a large instar or if they've purged and these are just toilet rolls and the first thing I do is I just take the toilet roll put a piece of paper towel over it so they can't escape and then just put the rubber band over it and then what I do is I put uh, food in there and I'll show a little clip of that and put the caterpillar in there and then put it down in and I also put it in the enclosure because they have been known to tip it over and then they'll escape so uh, every day I just check or every twice a day morning and night I check to make sure um, they didn't go in a chrysalis if uh, they have not I give it more food once they purge which I generally see on the toilet roll um, and again I think I have a clip of that they will make their sling and attach themselves to this cardboard and if you've noticed they camouflaged all of these have camouflaged themselves the color of the cardboard so I don't have any green ones um, and so uh, a couple of them that were green actually were the ones that did a merge so um, again I just keep feeding them until they go into their chrysalis and once they dry I just take this off and cut it and I do have a video that I'll link above where it shows how I did that so I just cut it and let's say um, he's made his chrysalis on this cardboard I put the date on it and then take a safety pin and pin him to my enclosure. Now let's say that he has made himself on a uh, spot that you don't like and or he falls and you just have a random caterpillar which is what I did with this one. This one right here. Oops, sorry buddy. Um, this one is a caterpillar that um, I either it either fell off or I didn't like where it was so I made the little uh, butterfly pillow and I put him in here and then I just attached him to my enclosure so how I make the butterfly pillow is again I have that toilet roll I take the paper towel and staple put the date on it and slip him in and pin him to the enclosure pretty easy um, and again this is I just wanted to show you close up this one actually was the earliest one this one was from 8-7 and he's pretty some of them too when you do touch them they may move so don't be alarmed but right now they're sleeping so I will attach this one back in my enclosure I'm going to still keep them in the house or put them outside for a couple more weeks until October and then I will hang him in the garage wake him up next May so that's how I overwinter my black swallowtails I don't leave them in my house or my crawl space as this is still too warm and they may emerge in the middle of the winter and you don't have any food for them. The garage is not heated so you could put them again in the garage or an outside shed or a all seasons room that has weather conditions like outside but protect it. Or you could just leave them outside and let them find a safe place. Sometimes they hide under brush. I don't remove any of my flower heads at the end, um, end of fall because they may, I might have chrysalises in there or other bees, other pollinators that do use the plants for the winter. So I just leave everything until late spring. 
then you don't need to do anything else. They don't need water. I've had a couple of people ask if they need water. They do not. I just use water to spritz them and to kind of wake them up out of their slumber, but they don't need to. Once they feel the warmth, they do wake up. So again, what I do is mid-May, I bring them in, spritz them, and then within seven to 10 days, they do wake up. I did have one instance where we had unseasonable warm weather in May and one emerged in the garage, but I noticed it flapping around in the enclosure and so I released it. But I've only had that happen once and once October comes, I've never had one emerge in the garage. Sandy K.A.H.S. Are they adults? And I'm not sure if she means adult butterflies or caterpillars. So Sandy, uh, what that is, is that they are caterpillars that go into their chrysalis. When they are adult butterflies, they will not live through the winter. So these are the caterpillars that decide to overwinter until the next spring. And then that's when they mate and start the cycle again. And she also asked how long do they stay in their pupa? And again, that is anywhere from nine months to 24 months. So they could go in their chrysalis. In my area, they go in their chrysalis in August and then emerge in May. But they could overwinter the whole season like mine did. And what I do is I just pin it to my veggie pad outside. And I only did this the one time, but I pinned that one in the veggie pod all summer. Did not emerge all summer. And since this was one of my first years, I wasn't sure if it was alive or not. But I just kept her in the enclosure all summer, brought her back in in the winter. And then, surprise, in May, she came out after about 22 months. So don't give up until after that two years. And generally, you can kind of see that sometimes the chrysalis, I've never had this happen, but I've heard people, if they have chrysalises outside, they might see holes in the chrysalis. And unfortunately, that means that a predator probably got to it and either laid eggs or killed it. So um, in that case, you won't have a chrysalis that survives. But in the summer, they are in their chrysalis, usually between nine to 18 days. And it really depends on weather. As if it gets a little bit cooler, they are in their chrysalis a little bit longer. And in the heat of the summer, they do emerge pretty quickly within seven to nine days. Vanessa A. Rodriguez asked in an email if she could put it in her crawl space. And I'm not sure if her crawl space is under her living space, but I would say no, because it still might be too warm in there. And she also asked if I check on it. And what I usually do is once I hang it, I kind of, since I do pass it every single day, I kind of look up to see if any have emerged the first week or two, which they have never done. And then once May comes, that's when I start looking again and bring it in. So as you can see, they're really pretty easy to overwinter. And so if I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. And if you have, please hit the like and comment below if you have ever raised black swallowtails that would like to learn. Um, ask me any questions or comments in the details of this video below. YouTube does like the interaction between the creator and the audience. So make sure that if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I wanted to thank all my new subscribers and existing subscribers that I have. I really want to thank you for the support. I have been a YouTube creator since February 2022, and I have a new appreciation for YouTube creators. 2024 will be a pivotal year for me as I reach a milestone birthday. I'm going to be turning 65. So the next year will determine where my YouTube channel goes for in the future. So to support my channel, if you could, could share my video with anyone that would like my content or like, comment, or or subscribe. It definitely helps my channel and the YouTube algorithm. So thanks again. Now I'm going to share that garden tip for long lasting blooms for your cut flowers. Thanks 
for watching and happy gardening. Bye-bye.